Considered by many people as the best piece of technology that came out in 2021 was the new MacBook Pro lineup from Apple. Apple almost single-handedly shook the entire chip industry with the in-house M1 chips that delivered performance never seen before in laptops. Even today, Apple's M1 Pro and M1 Max chips are miles ahead of the competition. However, this wasn't all a smooth ride. And in this review, I will be talking about my experience of using the base model of MacBook Pro 14 for almost 6 months from a perspective of a user with moderate to heavy workload. And in the end, we will see if this is still a good buy in 2023. Before we get into that, if you are new here, my name is Amit and I would really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up. And in case you love this video and want to watch more like these, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with the reviews and comparisons I do here. With that out of the way, let's get back to the review. With the M1 Pro and M1 Max lineup, Apple has taken up a new design approach to their laptops, making them look more squared off and boxier. Compared to previous generations, new MacBooks are thicker and heavier, which provides a bit of room for better thermals and bigger battery. The laptop feels sturdy with aluminum build. However, with the metal comes the issues of its own. Chipping. I've seen many YouTubers talk about it, but I've been lucky to keep my laptop safe and haven't seen any chipping yet. Hinge is as smooth as ever, allowing you to easily open the lid with one finger. According to Apple, the thermal system in these MacBooks is capable of moving 50% more air at a lower fan speed. As a result, the new thermal architecture allows the MacBook Pros to maintain high performance over extended periods, without overheating or requiring the fans to turn on at a higher speed. In my experience, I totally agree with that claim. A laptop is super quiet, as I've never heard the fans kicking in, or my laptop getting warm to touch, even while doing 4K video editing or running dozens of applications at the same time. More space also means more ports. With this generation of MacBooks, Apple brought back a number of ports which make this laptop a dream for any creator. On one side, you have the MagSafe for charging along with two Thunderbolt 4 ports and the headphone jack. On the other side, you have the HDMI so you can hook your laptop to a projector anytime you want. One more Thunderbolt port and an SD card reader. Let's move on to talk about the display. Apple devices always have good displays, but this Liquid Retina Pro XDR display is fantastic and it takes the game to a whole new level. Thin bezels around the display and rounded corners look elegant. Thin bezels had allowed Apple to keep the device footprint almost same as a 13-inch MacBook Pro, while having increased the screen size by almost an inch. 120Hz refresh rate makes the general usage like scrolling web pages and switching applications extremely smooth. We can see this unorthodox design with iPhone-like notch, which many might despise, but to be honest, after using the device for more than six months, I rarely notice it. With the new design came the new keyboard. Touch bar was noticeably missing in the new MacBook Pros, which wasn't a big loss. In its place, there is a full-size function key row. They did keep the fingerprint scanner, which is a treat to use with fraction of a second response time. The keyboard in general is an absolute pleasure to use and type on. Most importantly, it is reliable, unlike its predecessor, the infamous butterfly keyboard. Keys have a good amount of travel with good spacing between them and have a clicky feedback. As for the trackpad, it is accurate and huge, undoubtedly the best trackpad I've ever used. MacBook Pro 14 base model features M1 Pro SoC with 8-core CPU, 14-core GPU and 16GB unified memory. It also boasts of having 16-core neural engine which claims to offer 3 to 4 times faster CPU performance and 13 times graphics performance than Intel-based MacBooks. Computation-wise, I've never come across any task, at least in my workflow, that would make this machine rumble. Editing 4K footage is buttery smooth, I can edit and screen record at the same time, still will not notice any draw frames or any kind of lag. Rendering times compared to my Omen 15 are super fast. And all that computation power in such a small package, this machine is a dream for any content creator. The heat management, as mentioned earlier, is exceptionally good. The new MacBook Pros maintain high performance over extended periods without overheating or requiring the fans to turn on at higher speeds. As a result, the fans are almost never loud enough to bother you. Battery also is bigger and when combined with more efficient M1 Pro chip, battery life on these MacBooks is truly fantastic. It will last you at least a day or more on general day-to-day -day usage like using it on max brightness, replying to emails, writing scripts and watching videos, and if I talk about my perspective, it easily gives me 6-7 to seven hours of video editing. Whereas my Omen 15 will only give me 1.5-2 to two hours. Battery part of this laptop is unquestionably good. 
But let's talk about the other related aspect, charging. This is the base model and it comes with a smaller 67W MagSafe charger which charges the MacBook slower than the bigger MagSafe. But it is fast enough. All of the USB-C ports also allow charging and that's why I rarely use the MagSafe as whenever I dock my MacBook to connect to my monitor, it automatically charges through the connected USB-C. But MagSafe is definitely a better way to charge a laptop because it's so fast. According to Apple, MacBook Pro uses a lens with a wider aperture that lets in more light and combined with the larger sensor that has more efficient pixels, camera delivers two times better low light performance. Well, the fancy claims aside, the webcam is not very good, as it is the case with any other laptop. But hear me out. To counter that claim, Apple enabled a feature called Continuity Camera, which allows you to use your iPhone's camera and microphone on your MacBook, which are way, way better than what you have in your laptop. Talking about speakers, MacBooks have six speaker sound system, and you can see the speakers on both sides of the keyboard. These are so punchy and robust. These speakers can easily put any other non-MacBook speaker to shame. MacBook speakers are so finely calibrated that they provide a consistent performance across lows, mids, and highs, which is very rare. And if you want more proof of how good the speakers are, please go and check this video out from Dave Doody. Coming to the last and final piece, macOS. Apple recently released macOS Ventura, which has some much needed upgrades that people have been asking for. There's a short video on the best features of macOS Ventura I did some time back using the link on the top right corner of the screen. In the end, I think it is extremely difficult to be completely satisfied with the value offered by a product this expensive. However, I would be lying if I say there was even an iota of regret after buying this laptop. This laptop has been a perfect workhorse for anything and everything I have thrown at it. Price is definitely a huge concern for most people, but again, this is not for everybody. There are tons of more affordable machines out there which will serve you just as well. However, for someone with a computation-heavy requirement, I think this is the best option available on the market right now. Apple might already be working on upgrading M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, but I think the upgrades will only be marginally better than this, as the performance is already on another level. Peace out.